In this video, we are going to discuss the 3 to 1 principle, mostly useful in aligning the part during CMM inspection, and so on. If you find this video useful, then please subscribe to my channel. Let's consider this object, placed in the first quadrant, and free to move and rotate in all directions, to know more about quadrants. Subscribe to my channel and check out my video on first angle projection and third angle projection. 3 2 1 principle is used to constrain the motions of the object and stabilize it to perform the required operations on it. So, we are going to consider each of the motion at a time to get a better understanding. To start with, let's consider the motion of the object along the x axis. As you can see, the object is free to move along the x axis, and also, it is free to rotate about the x axis. Now let's place this x-axis aside, so that once we constrained the object's motion along x-axis we can delete it respectively. Now, let's consider the motion along the y-axis, as you can see the object is free to move along the y-axis. And the object is also, free to rotate about the y-axis as demonstrated. Likewise, let's move this y-axis aside, so that we can delete it, once we constrained the motion of the object along the y-axis. The same implies to z-axis, the object is free to move along the z-axis as seen on the screen, and likewise, it is free to rotate about the z-axis, as illustrated. And now, let's move the z-axis as well so that it becomes easier to delete it, once we constrain the motion of the object along the z-axis. As the name suggests, first we will consider three points, as seen on the screen. When we touch these three points to the object, we can see that the object now, cannot move along the z-axis, and also now the object cannot rotate about the y-axis, and also it cannot rotate about the x-axis. But, the object can still move along the x-axis and y-axis, as seen. And note that, it can rotate about z-axis. So with this, we can get rid of transitional motion along z-axis, and rotational motion about x-axis and y-axis. Hence we have constrained the z-transitional motion, x-rotational motion, and y-rotational motion. Now, we will place the two points onto the object, as seen on the screen. With these two points, now the object cannot rotate about the z-axis, and also it cannot move along the x-axis. Which means, we have constrained the z-rotational motion and x-transitional motion. So let's get rid of this rotational z-axis and this transitional x-axis. But, as you can see, the object can still move along the y-axis. So, to constrain this y-transitional motion, let's place this final point onto the object, as shown. With this point in place, now the object cannot move along the y-axis as well. Which means we have constrained the final y-transitional motion. In brief, by placing the first three points we have constrained z-transitional motion, x-rotational motion, and y-rotational motion, then by placing two points onto the object, we have constrained z-rotational motion and x-transitional motion, and finally by placing one point, we have constrained y-transitional motion as well. With this, all the motions of the object are constrained by using 3 to one principle. With this we come to an end of this video, hope you found the video informative and useful, if yes, then please subscribe to my channel.